Welcome to our lecture online and for the last video in this set what we need to do here is take the three capacitors that have the same area, surface area of the plates but different separation distances. None of them have dielectric so we just use the dielectric constants uh, equal to one or we just use the epsilon sub naught which is the permittivity of free space and then here is how we can then express the capacitance of each of the three capacitors the only difference between them is that each have a different distance between the plates. Notice all the areas are the same, but all the distances, the separation distances are different. We're now going to take those three capacitors and connect them in series, and we're trying to find the equivalent capacitance of that set. Of course, we know that we have to use the 1 over rule, 1 over the C total equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. However, if we use this equation, and plug these three values into that equation, it becomes an algebraic nightmare. It's kind of difficult to do. You can give it a try. However, it's, sometimes it's easier to take them two at a time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first combine these two capacitors, make them into one, and then add it to the third one. That way I can use the product over the sum rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the sum of C1 plus C2, so let's call that C on the right side of the circuit. And that can be said to be equal to the product C2, C3 divided by C2 plus C3. So that way I can use the equation I like better. That makes it easier to algebraically simplify. So let's plug in the values for those. So in this case, this is equal to epsilon sub naught A over D2 multiplied times epsilon sub naught a over d3, all divided by the sum, which is epsilon sub naught, a over d2 plus epsilon sub naught, a over d3. Notice that I can, on the, in the denominator, factor out, oh, I forgot my little line here, an epsilon sub naught times a. So let's go ahead and do that. So this can then be written as epsilon sub naught a, well, let me, um, actually what I wanted to do is just the following thing. Let me do this instead. So in the numerator, we're going to get epsilon sub naught squared a squared divided by d2 times d3. And in the denominator, when we factor out an epsilon sub naught times a, we have left 1 over d2 plus 1 over d3. All right, now you can see that I can do some simplification. I can cancel this with those on the numerator. And then in the denominator, what I can do is the following. I can say, well, this is equal to epsilon sub naught times A divided by D2, D3. And in the denominator, I'm going to find the common denominator, which is D2 times D3. So I end up with D3 plus d2 divided by d2 times d3. So that's what I did here. We'll simply add these up by using the common denominator of the product of these two, so end up with d3 plus d2 in the numerator. Now you can see that the d2, d3 here and the d2, d3 here can cancel. And so I'm left with an epsilon sub naught times a divided by d2 plus d3 and that is the equivalent capacitance of the right two capacitors. So then, what I can do here is I can have my left capacitor, which is my C1, and then these two combined, I'll call this C on the right side. I'll call that C sub R for the capacitance of the right two capacitors. On the left, I have C1, which is still this value right here. On the right, I have this value right there. And now I'm ready to combine those, again, using the product over the sum. So now we can say that C total is equal to the product. That would be C1 times CR divided by the sum C1 plus CR. So in this case, C1 is going to be epsilon sub naught A over D1 multiplied times C on the right, which is epsilon sub naught A over d2 plus d3, all divided by the sum, which is epsilon sub naught 
a over d1 plus epsilon sub naught a over d2 plus d3. And that should be a 3 right there. There we go. All right. Doesn't look too bad because we can factor out an e sub naught a on the bottom here. So that gives me the following. So I have this is equal to e sub naught a quantity squared divided by the product of these two. So we'd be divided by d1 times d2 plus d3. In the denominator, when I factor out an epsilon sub naught times a, I'm left with a 1 over d1 plus a 1 over d2 plus d3, like so. And then again, I can cancel this, and I can cancel that. And then all I have to do is simplify that algebraically. So now I'm going to move over here. And let's see what we have left here on the denominator. We have an epsilon sub naught times a divided by d1 times d2 plus d3. Let me bring this down a little bit. And so put the equal sign there. Now in the denominator, the common denominator would be d1 times d2, d3. So let's do that. So we have a common denominator of d1, oop, I should close the parentheses there, times d2 plus d3. And notice that gives me the same denominator that I have up there, which is what I wanted, so I can cancel that out. But I'm not ready yet because then I have to write a d2 plus d3 there. So I have d2 plus d3. And then I need a d1 over here, plus d1. So now you can see that this denominator and this denominator cancels. And so now we're left with epsilon sub naught times a divided by in the denominator. It'll be d1 plus d2 plus d3. And this is then the total capacitance of the three capacitors connected in series. What's really interesting about that is that we're basically when we take these three capacitors that all have the same surface area, they all have air in between the plates, and they all have different distances, when you hook them up in series, you can then see that the total capacitance is equal to an equivalent one capacitor that has the separation distance of all three distances added together. So if we add D1 plus D2 and D3 together, that would then be, if we then make a capacitor, a single capacitor, and let's kind of do that graphically, Here's a single capacitor where the separation distance is equal to D1 plus D2 plus D3. And so you can see that if you hook them up like this, or you hook them up like this with a single capacitor, and adding up those distances, you have the exact same equivalent capacitance. I think that's kind of interesting. And so there it is, the result of that calculation. And that's how it's done.